in the world of Monster Hunter, there's many mighty beasts. Powerful, strange, and outrageously effective at doing what they do. And what they do is deal death in like an animal way where for them it's living normally, but for us, God, it's scary. But there is one question, one question that must be answered. Which one is strongest? Welcome, as we scientifically, factually, 100% provably correct prove the answer to that question. UTF. You know it, I know it. It stands for... Urinary Tract Faction. Yes, that's right. UTF, we all love it. It's UTF. It's... Uncle's Tomato Farm. Oh, we still love it. It's everybody's favorite. Everybody knows UTF. Uh, the fuck? That's the household name, trusted by everyone everywhere. We salute you, UTF. Unilateral transformer farts. And with that disappointing disappointment that makes me incredibly uncomfortable, it's time to welcome you all to Ultimate Turf War! Don't see you coming up with any UTFs. It was Ultimate Turf War, by the way. That's what you were going for the whole time, so. That's not even UTF! <laughs> oh my god, it's not UTF! <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, two monsters, two monster hunter minds. Battle be joined, who will come out on top? We'll guide you, but you decide. Today's title matchup is Well, first and foremost. Bum, 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 bum. Do you want big or small? Usually big. Well then your corner, standing proud. It's Geismagorm! Oh, he's a big guy. Oh yes, there's not actually much space for him here. It's quite cramped, but he's, he's here. He does not properly fit in this area. Taking on, here's our tribal. It's Primordial Malzano. Primordial Geismagorm. Yes, this should be quite a good one. It's law friendly, it's fun for all the family, and and my boy Primordial's gonna destroy some demon ass. You're about to watch a dragon destroy demon ass. I know you love demon asses. I understand. All right. I'll let you kick things off. Do it. Like now? Yeah, like now. Like, like go. Oh. Uh, Guys, Megorum is really big and he just has to step on you. Also... The Curios are a problem, even though you do overcome them in the end in the primordial Malzano fight. That is only truly with the assistance of hunters who work with you to cure you of the plague. Without it, you turn into evil red menace who kills everything at the behest of the Curios and of Geismagorm, who would never hurt Geismagorm once under the influence of Curios. Thus, because of the Curios, Geismagorm wins because they are willing to destroy everything that helps him. And he has so much power. He can shoot beams out of his face. He can make rocks come down from the sky. He can make the ground explode from a distance and you have to just deal with it. You may have a long record of fighting each other, but who came out on top in the end? Neither of us, because the hunters had to kill us both. <laughs> All right, well, I hear what you're saying. I don't like what you're saying, but I hear what you're saying and I'm and I'm glad that you said it. Not supposed to hear me. You're supposed to be in a booth. <laughs> it's supposed to be a little booth off to the side. Yeah. Here we go. Primordial Malzano, the Silver Duke Dragon, Legend Resurrected, the Guardian Knight of Peace, the Demon Lord. You know, a monster with that many titles has got something to back it all up, and by God, does he! 
He's naturally enemies with Guys Magon, rivals in fact. In fact, he exists to suppress him. Guys Magon was hiding in his little hole in the ground, waiting for Malzano to fall to the Curio before he felt safe to emerge. Pathetic. In fact, we're talking about a monster so useless, the reason he didn't emerge 50 years ago is because he accidentally dug up under a lake and washed himself back into his own hole, fell down and decided, you know what? I'll try again in 50 years somewhere else. I mean, when you're working against that kind of tactical brilliance, never mind the fact that Primordial Malzno is one of the most powerful monsters we've ever seen as a ridiculous variant of an already indomitable Elder Dragon. So, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a slaughter. And my time is up. I'll step out of my booth, I'll wave at you, and, uh, invite you to the podium. Hi. Why do we have booths and podiums? We have a lot of going on here. A lot of equipment is, is the thing. Is that a unicycle? Oh, that's for later. It's Guys McGon on a unicycle! Look at him go, everybody! Oh, and he's juggling too! Applause! Yay! The clock's going. The debate's on. Let's get ourselves a winner. I think I think everyone always gives Guys McGon a bad rap for the whole digging up underwater, <laughs> falling down yeah, a lake. Yeah, because it's the stoop. I, I lost so much respect for that I, final I'm boss. not done my statement. I it's think you need to give debate. him respect. It's all right, but go on. I think I think that you have to respect him in the concept that he fe when he fell down, as happens to all of us, instead of just trying to push through it in a weakened state and coming back up anyways, when he would have been in a worse position, he decided to take the smart trick, rest there for as long as it took to heal his wounds because he's not in a rush. He's tactically aware of the fact that he has time, more time than most other creatures, and he's not afraid to use it. Sure, he might have time in this battle. He could dig underground and wait there. It's possible, right? He could do that. He could just wait. Just wait it out until Primordial Malzano just dies. For God's sake. The, the, the alarming frequency at which your approach is, we could just, you know, let old age do its thing. We'll get a winner. And I think we could all uh, take, take a load off, go home. I just think it's a really difficult thing to not talk about because, like, sure, I could talk about the fact that you could just hit him with a beam and it would probably fry him from the inside, but, like, you could argue against that. What you can't argue about is time. Literally, the reason that Guys Were God has spent so much time underground waiting to emerge is because of Primordial Malzano preventing him from emerging by stopping the Curio everywhere and therefore cutting off his supply of energy so he's never strong enough to emerge. I think when you have a literal Batman-esque vigilante dragon who's dedicating their lives to preventing your existence, you're already beginning with a fairly uphill battle here. Well, surely in the situation where we have this fight, it isn't a neutral ground, which in theory means that your character could not have possibly have spent some, You could not have been spending years destroying the food supply of my monster. That just seems unfair for the situation. No, so surely it course, should be a full this is powered a guys, guys were gone that's now got enough energy, like the one we fight. But the point I'm making right. is that Primordial Malzano is both exists and designed to stop Geismagon. So when his current task is to stop Geismagon, it's fair to think and assume that he might be pretty good at doing that. However, I think his main task is stopping Geismagorm before he becomes powerful, not fighting Geismagorm or trying to kill Geismagorm. Even even through the concept of things like if we were to compare it to like Runer Nergigante and Shara Ishvalda, which he doesn't even do. But even then, that's like a scavenger hitting a weakened animal. This isn't even that case. He doesn't even go for the kill. He's so scared of this happening that he waits for us to intervene because he's being taken over by the Curios anyways. <laughs> I don't think he's scared so much as valiantly fighting, which I think is important. It speaks of his character, his indomitable will. And let's not forget his skill, right? This Elder Dragon is capable of precisely and quickly enough stabbing an individual curio with the tip of its wing while it's flying. That's like that's like martial arts master grabbing a fly with a pair of chopsticks level dexterity application of yeah. death dealing appendages. But is it like a single curio or is it he just hits one in a swarm of them so he's just sort of taking his shot? A single one, literally. It was in the whole cutscene. I don't think it could have been the whole cutscene. If you're implying that, it must have taken him a really long time to do. <laughs> uh, 
And on top of that, he can fly. And not just in a technical way. He's an incredibly agile, fast flyer. And Guy's McGon can't. That's irrelevant. So we do Doesn't end matter. up in the classic situation where you just stay about 100 feet above and then slowly kill Guy's McGon while he just looks upset at the sky if we're going to get, you know, cheesy with it. Well, I mean, I think if, if a big problem that Primordial Milesano has is that he is slowly succumbing to the Curios, but theoretically, the more Curios, the faster the succumbing, right? And what what is Geismagorm but, like, the home of the Curios? <laughs> yeah, but even if even if Primordial Milesano ends up in his full blood rage, bloodening state, he's still going to be trying to kill Geismagorm because in that state, he wants to kill everything. So actually, he's just made a more aggressive enemy for himself, and a more uh, powerful but, one, too, as he's now got powered up with well, Curio logically. energy. If it's curios that are in control of this transformation, logically, they, there there would be some sort of a way to identify like guys who are not as an enemy. It's just an overload of curio energy that sends him crazy. But do we know that for a fact? <laughs> that is that is how they work. Yeah, pretty much. Says so in the big book of how monsters work. Yeah, but that's just like that's just research from that's by just people the opinion without of exact the researchers evidence. of the guild, man. You don't know for sure. Well, the researchers have said a lot of crazy shit over the years, haven't they? They don't <laughs> the always get it right. have gone a bit crazy. I'm just saying, they don't always get it right. <laughs> Do your own field research. <laughs> don't believe what they say, those damn Wyverians. They've not seen anything yet. Well, so it could probably just, like, grab you or something and just, just keep pummeling you into the floor until you die. Yeah, but then that comes down to a big dexterity question again. And guys, we're going to spend most of his time just sort of flailing about in a, in a little pit. Not really getting much done. I mean, if you oh, see but that flailing wall, hits you so often. Yeah, but you say that like trying to climb a wall is a part of regular combat. No, but it just proves how ungainly and slow and uh, poor of existence. It proves that he's bad at. F I can't. If you put me in front of a wall and asked me to climb it, I would. I would probably struggle. It doesn't mean I'm bad at existing. I think it would mean that you would be quite bad at catching like a nimble aesthetic, uh, athletic person. Okay, let's not bring aesthetics into this. <laughs> <laughs> you would be really bad at catching an aesthetic person, man. I'm just saying. This, is, this just seems so mean. And Primordial Malzano is pretty damn pretty, so guys, we're gone. It's a bit of a... He does have a lot of different colors. What's going on there? I just All right, think well, next stage, she's going to eat him. I just think he would have an incredibly difficult time catching Primordial Malzano in any meaningful capacity. Like... I Guys agree, Gon's but I also think... comes from the Curio Swarm, which doesn't really help him here because he's fighting the anti-Curio Dragon. Yeah, but th I just think the more Curios you get, the harder that becomes. And while obviously it would be hard for Guys Magorm to get a hit on, on Malzano, I think it would take a lot of damage from Malzano to do anything proper to Guys Magorm. Yeah, but I do think Primal Malzano is more than capable of doing that damage and surprisingly quickly. Like, those wingtip spear stabs would penetrate Guys Magorm and that is quite a, a rapid... Right, but if you actually were to stab somebody with a weapon like that, you would find very, very quickly that it's not easy to get it back out. Especially of, like, <laughs> hardened scales. He's just gonna get stuck and then you've got a monster, a monster who has grabbing appendages separate from his movement, who could then grab you actively. Okay, answer this. Primordial Malzano has literally defeated Guy's Magon in the past and made him retreat underground. Like, that's an event that has happened. So, technically, he's already won this fight once. It's because he wasn't... He didn't have Curio power yet. He needed to power <laughs> up. Okay, my bad. But even without the Curio power, that means that he knows how to both fight and deal with Guy's Magon's shenanigans. They might be more powerful shenanigans, but they're still his core shenanigans. And it proves that Guy's Magorm knows how to, d to dig. That doesn't help! The bro. Coming in? Oh, and now he could dig. Well, I just think that one of them is a lot more likely to survive if everything just burrows down very, very deep. Oh. And even then, it's not really what do you do with the pressure? so much as finding a big hollowed out underground cavern to hide out in. Well, how does he get down there? <laughs> And even then, Guys McGon got hit repeatedly by launched range Dragonators, which aren't exactly the fastest and most gainly of projectiles. Well, clearly it's because he wasn't concerned about them. Oh, okay, no, it didn't just explode him and he immediately went, Oh, not again, and retreated back into his pit and we just followed him in. Precisely, yes. 
Does it mean precisely one Dragonator was enough to make him retreat again? Well, no, it was enough to make him think, I don't want to deal with that. Again, he's tactical, he's smart. Okay, Why tactical. do you think he's the hard he's, way when you can do it the smart way? It's embarrassment that keeps happening to him. That's, that's the thing. It's not, it's not embarrassment. He just know, he just knows when to, to recollect his, his assets and try again. <laughs> It's a. It's not a. It's not a retreat. It's an advance in the opposite direction. It's just a, a curved strategy. I just, I just don't see him being able to do anything meaningful. Like even all the explosions and the blood bombs and the curio powers. Like they're so slow and low to the ground and they're not very accurate. Like even when he's climbing the wall and aims his big beam, he still misses the stationary hunters on the freaking ballista. And it takes yeah, like but twenty-five seconds for it to go off. That's not. That's not. The beam isn't the main use of that attack. It's to create the giant explosion, which then doesn't really matter how how like. How accurate he is if it's a giant explosion. Look, I think Gal Guys McGon would be very good at destroying a town. I just don't think he'd be very good at destroying a hyper intelligent combat focused Elder Dragon that's literally evolved to be his anti I think in a similar way they're sort of each other's antithesis. Because <laughs> he has to get past him, too. So they've sort of evolved alongside I mean, that's each true. other. That's why this is an interesting fight, which is why it's gonna have to go down to the lovely comments. <laughs> All of Look at look at them. Look at them there. Look at them everywhere. Such lovely comments. Oh, the reply button. Ah, <laughs> the like button. All right. Get your drawing finger doing drawing motions. That's a weird request. This is a weird request. I kind of just committed to that sentence and I had to see it through. Did you, did you though? Three, two, one. Oh, go, 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 go. Hey, man. Hi. Nice drawing. You don't know that, but thank you. I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be a nice drawing. Me too. Uh, and then, like, uh, he goes like, yeah. And then there's, like, one of these here. Oh, my God. God, there's one of oh, these right. everywhere. And then, like, oh God, yeah, and then it's like that, yeah. And he does that, right? And he goes a bit of like that. And it goes over there. Just some cool stuff, I think. I hope so. We don't know that for a fact though, right? There's just a lot, like, I, there is some issues, I think, with what I've done. Right. But I think if we look past them and ignore them, it's actually quite a good, quite a good drawing. Right. From what I can see, which is not anything correct. Thanks, man. Problem. That's really cool. Of you How are we doing on time? Say time. Yeah. Oh, twenty-five seconds. I wish you would would have told me before that. I didn't know either. To be fair, I just checked. When you I, I know, but I just wish that I would have known more, so that I could rededicate my time in different ways. <laughs> ah, I have fill holes again. <laughs> the legendary fill holes. Three, two, one, go. Oh no. Look how beautiful it is. Oh no. You sorry, is yours just like zoomed in on a quarter of the drawing? Where's the rest oh, of it? Oh, I'm so sorry guys, McGon, that you've been treated this way. That's... You've only drawn like a quarter of the monster. This is cheating. That's, that's such a shame. You can draw as much of the bloody monster as you want. You're in control of your own goddamn drawing. You only drew like- I drew a whole guy's Magorum and you drew a, w a wing and a neck. Oh, as opposed to last time where you just drew the head of Azeroth. That wasn't this time though. <laughs> You have drawn the unfortunate result of someone experimenting on an innocent salamander and giving it two extra legs on its back. And lots of lots of lips. <laughs> yes, and lots of lots of lips. You've come up with the fall. Sorry, the, the, the five legged? Yeah, the five legged, three lipped blue salamander. No, you can't. The sixth one is behind the, the fifth okay, one. Okay, well, that, make, that, that totally makes it better. The six legged, three lipped blue salamander is what you've drawn. Correct. So where's Guy's forgotten? He's in there. Oh, he's in there somewhere. Yeah, he's wearing the... Yeah, he's wearing... It's, it's his Halloween suit. Yeah, he's wearing the six-legged, three-lipped blue salamander suit. That's correct, yeah. I feel a lot better about mine now, because I think, it, you know, you can tell it's primordial Malzano. Sort of. You can. If it wasn't for the wings that got a bit too blocky, okay? you got the golden horn, you've got his ridges, you've got his face. There's a face there. He's got an he eye. He does have an eye, yeah. You know, the grey middle bit, a classic feature of a primordial Malzano. Middle bit, yeah. So, I think you need to respect the artistry that's gone into this. I do respect the artistry of this 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 eighth of a Malzano. All right then, there's only one final bit of battling left to do twixt these titans, and I think we all know what it is. What is it? It's hot words said hotly. Microwave volcano. I see you've played hot words before. Only hot. I'll go first. Count me in. One, two, three, four. Primordial Malzano. When I saw this battle, I was like, whoa, I get to face my ancient foe. And as you all know, I would never lose that, though. Oh! Poor Kirio. He didn't ask for that. Let's see you stand up to that. Huh? One, a two, a one, two, one, two, one, three, a one. 
Two. How many do I count to? You want to talk about weathering a storm? Talk to my buddy, Geis McGorm. That's me. I'm Geis McGorm. You're Melzano. You suck. Oh. Real big words from inside the six-legged, three-lipped blue salamander suit there. That's where it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> it is safe because you keep losing and retreating. No, it's tactical. I'm trying a new tactic. <laughs> well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You make your decisions. I know what I've chosen. Yeah, because you were forced to. Hey, I asked you big or small, okay? No, I'm saying that you, you that, that decision wasn't even your choice. Well, let's go on to the bonus match. Complete random. Using a random number, 1, 2, 2, 2, 8, using the 20th anniversary poll, we'll do your combatant first this time around. Boom! Hmm, number 80, Shara Ishvalda. That's that's a good start. That is a good start. I don't like that, actually. It's a really irritating It leaves a very a very small percentage chance of a uh, oh, equal after, after fucking honey bear fatalities, it doesn't matter what I get, all right? Shara's going to have a heart attack and die. That was a specific counter, though, because Crimson Fatalities. Oh, yeah, yeah, like that was a specific... Everyone no, Scribs of Dallas is a honey weakness. Not every monster has a win condition like honey. You'd have to get Azeros for that to apply. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if I roll Azeros, you're going to willingly forfeit the match? Correct. Based on your own... Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Your, your own logic. <laughs> I have to listen to my own logic. All right. Well, I'm rolling the dice. All right, I got 44, which is uh -oh. a Cantor. Okay. I think we've actually got a match on our hand. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Okay. I'll open up this time. Okay. Oh, did I open up last time? Um, no, you did. I'll open up. So, right. a Cantor! He's the big boy. He's the black god. A god. A literal god. Godlike powers is what we're dealing with here today. And uh, anything less than a literal god can't stand up. So, uh, I barely need to even use the rest of this time. But I will, because a total victory is better than just a normal victory. So, Shara's main deal is sound and vibrations, right? And Akantor's main deal is sound and vibrations. But he just needs to yell really fucking loud to the point it makes a sound beam. Which Shara needs six little twiddly fingers to be able to do. Like, think of the power difference, alright? The sound vibrating Elder Dragon still has a weaker sound beam than a Kanto yelling really loud. Like, that is a discrepancy that is already a big black mark against Sharish Velda's name. But even past that, a Kanto is strong enough to bite a Gravios in half, who has a rocky carabase capable of swimming through magma. Shara's just got a wood body in it. So, no matter which way you slice it, Sharish Velda's getting sliced. And my time's up. And now your time has begun. Wow, I have time. So much time. I could think for years. But I wouldn't need to. Because Sharish Valda will vibrate the ground until it is some sort of mush, locking a cantor into it, and then will re-solidify it by stopping the vibrations. Then, Sharish Valda will kill a cantor. Slowly. Menacingly. <laughs> brutally. Perhaps a spirit bomb made of air. Perhaps... A rosin gun, as would be more accurately labeled, though we always called it a spirit bomb for fun. Perhaps just one of the tiny beams that comes out of a single one of its tentacles, because Shara Ishvalda produces more vibrations with its little finger than you do with your entire strange uh, lizard-like body. <laughs> Skin, hard as tree, which can be hard as rock in some situation, but also can wear rock-like armor somehow? Incredible. How deal with... No deal with. Also, stare into your soul. Your time's up. That's unfortunate for you. Sorry, did you get instructions to to read that like a voice actor that's been hired to do an advert, but they've not got to see the script until they've got into the recording booth? I just have a tentacle aimed at my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made some points. I'll give you that. You have made some points. Oh, cool. I got points. You did get some points. So let's talk about those points. <sighs> like points. All right. You can't refute the fact that a cantor has a better sound beam than the sound elder dragon, which I think is I quite think the slam dunk You here. can, though, because it's not a sound beam. It's air vibrations. He's not trying to make a beam with sound. He's trying to vibrate the air, which is a different concept. Yes, but a Cantor's yell beam would just rip through Sharish Valde. But would it even be realized like that today properly, or would it just be loud noise make take damage? It would be, because it's got a reach of, like, half the arena. It just distinctly is a beam. 
But that doesn't even make logical sense. Like, how can you direct sound in a straight line in front of you? That's just how good. I mean, he's the Black God, man. That's just how good he is. Like, that's what you're well, up Except for the here. part where that's just a random mythical title. He's not a god in any sense. <laughs> He's not even an elder dragon, so like I don't even. Up, okay, one he's. Elder you don't have dragon. any ground to stand on. He's elder dragon level. Okay. But what does that mean? What does I... that mean? Like elder dragon level, but he's not an elder dragon. So how? Like how? What's the comparison that because forces he that to be he even relevant? The power level to be an elder dragon, but not the other qualities. Elder dragon is a title. Okay, it's not a species. Yeah, but it's... one of the qualifications for elder dragon is just power. If you are yeah, strong so he enough, has that, that you but pass he the, the others, so he doesn't get to be an elder dragon. But there are some monsters that only have the power and are still Elder Dragon Snow, which theoretically no. means he's not strong enough for that. No, I'm no, pretty sure not. that's the case. What is what is what is Fatalis if not a dragon? <laughs> yes, yes, a dragon. <laughs> well, I, I'm not letting you distract me, okay, with this nonsense. The point is, even your little like goopy flaw. Firstly, stopping the vibrations would just turn it back into sand again, which he'd just step out of because he's monstrously strong. Well, that's strong. only if we're on sand. If we're on rock, you can still vibrate it's that rock, into it's not being getting, a It's not getting liquefaction. Because that's not even remotely true because you can still do that. You can still do that with rock if you vibrate hard enough, which clearly it can. You would it's have a vibration to vibrate the dragon. rock to the point that it not just breaks apart, but breaks apart so finely it is sand-esque and therefore acts like sand does when air is passed through it, at which point it would just However, be really easy to step out of again. I think you're underestimating the effects of quicksand, which is essentially what it would be creating, because it would just be a deep, deep, deep pit of sand. And what quicksand does is suck up heavier things a lot easier than it does lighter things. Therefore, a monster of that size would quite struggle with such an obstacle. Oh, you know what? You're right. Oh, it's a real problem that Akantar's been, like, sunk into the ground. It really is. It's a real shame that he's not an incredibly capable burrowing animal that creates tunnels through rocks consistently to attack his enemies. It's a shame. He only does that with oh, his wait! face, though. No, that is exactly what he does. But he does that with his face, not with the other parts of his body. He would just aim downwards your, in the dig goop, out your body. burrow under Sharish Valder, emerge, and snap him like a twig, which he is in this instance. He isn't, though. He's got a very hard shell, which is it represented by him not have falling plating. apart. He does. He specifically has plates. I'm pretty sure yeah, that's yeah, a drop he has. Not everywhere. He's got head plates. No, nobody has plates everywhere. A can't can't his belly does. is a weak spot. No, he doesn't. His belly is <laughs> a weak spot. His belly is still armored. Not even close to relevantly. At the, at the end of the day, one bite and Sharish Valder's dead. Like, I don't agree the, with that. I mean, one bite on strength, one specific spot, yes. The jaw strength to one-shot a Gravios with a bite to its middle, where it is hardest and tankiest, okay, applied to pretty much anything else, is going to absolutely murderize it. Right, but for that, you need to get a draw, a draw grip strength on, like, the neck, basically, which you won't even get the leverage for like you would on a Gravios. Like, a Gravios, you can fit the whole thing in your mouth. You have That's full control true. of Gravios how you eat that. isn't that much smaller than a Cantor. Well, I mean, then a Cantor is a lot smaller than Sharish Valda in that case. <laughs> that's not true. Gravios isn't that much smaller than Sharish Valda. They're very similarly sized. Okay, that's a, that's a bad argument to begin with. Gravios is way smaller than Sharish Valda. A Cantor Valda. and Sharish Valda are about the same size. I disagree with that. You can't just disagree with that. Yes, I can. <laughs> That's not how that works. Let's ask the internet. Let's ask the internet. <laughs> <sighs> if only there was actual numbers we could look at. Right, a cantor is longer than Sharish Volda, but that doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> yeah, anything. I, in a, like, I don't even know a what that is. A cantor is 30 meters long. And Sharish Valder is 29 meters long. They are. Yeah, but that's length. That's like. Inside. Sharish Valder is so much deeper. <laughs> so thicker. much deeper. The point is neck, head, tail, leg, even just a good chomp out of his side. Every single bite is going to be devastating. And the agility speed difference between them is essentially non existent. They're both big, flaily, chargy, like heavy boys that aren't really doing anything spectacularly acrobatically. Like, Akantai is just going to charge, and then what's Shara going to do? Flail, flail about. Probably shoot the massive sound beam while it's being charged at head on. I think this basically. Oh, no, not the massive sound beam that will splash harmlessly across his ridiculous carapace. <laughs> 
Yeah, because it's not like he's going to open his mouth to try and go for a bite during the charge at his any point. His mouth that is clearly resistant to a high intensity of sound because he l generates it from his That's mouth. That's not how pressure works. It's not literally sound. It's pressure. He's literally shooting pressure of air down your throat at a high rate. There's no resistance to that. If a Kantar can roar to the point where it is lethal at like 200 meters away, then his lungs, his mouth, his vocal cords has to be ridiculously tough to withstand that shooting, kind of uh, pressure that it would create. Shooting, the, the, the type of resistance you need to shoot out air is very different than the type of resistance you need to have air income. <laughs> I love like shooting out air, air just means... Shooting out air just means that you have really strong diaphragm. That doesn't mean that you can take a fucking pressure washer fired down your throat. <laughs> If Shari's his vibrations were that strong, they would split the hunter in half, and it barely damages. That's the him. entire idea. It was like they do if you don't have your crazy health. armor. Yeah, if you have end game armor. Yeah, maybe like a Cantor armor. Yeah, but that's still a Cantor armor, which is still like we're not even talking about that. The Cantor armor wouldn't even be end game Iceborne armor. We have no idea what a Cantor armor is. It would take from Shari's <laughs> I don't think Ganto would even flinch if he had to charge through a Shareshvelder sound beam. I think he would the second he had to open any any orifice at all. If that hits you in the <laughs> eye, that will hurt like As fuck. As we all know, a Kantar only charges with full orifice closure. Yeah, I'm sure he closes his nostrils too. <laughs> Not to mention his tusks, which are just deadly Shareshvelder killing speed. I think this mostly comes down to can you make it into melee properly? And I think you've got a decent chance, but I think all it takes is one good sound blast at the wrong spot. Not even sound... Why am I calling them sound blasts now? That's what you're calling. They're vibration. It's very different. It's air pressure. <laughs> I will I will admit that it is a very even fight, which is why it's quite a good one to get. But I, I do think that the second it comes down to melee, then Shara is getting crunched quite helplessly. Yeah, that's I what mean, I agree with. I'm, I'm not fighting the, against that. the Ruin Ener Gigante, which is like a fifth of the size. Okay, it's and literally yes, it dying weakened, on the floor. But he still couldn't do a thing to ruin her attacking. It's him. literally already dying. Already He gets up and has a go and he just can't do anything. He gets up from being dead. <laughs> All right, then, guys, that's the debate. Let us know where you side. But for now, it's time for the draw side. Yeah, that was smooth. That was a smooth transition right there. It's drawing time. It was, wasn't it? All right. It was. Two minutes on the clock. Let's go. Okay, so a cantor has a face. He does. You're so right. He does have a face, right? So. So what does faces look like? Can you tell me? Oh, no. Are those supposed to be something I know about? I'm not going to say it because it will prep you to make the comment, but I think you might make a comment that I'm I'm not going to enjoy. No, you're not going to like it? I don't think you will like it. <laughs> I don't think you will like it at all, in I'm fact. To, I didn't realize I'd given you this like impression that I just won't like things. There is a semblance of issue yeah? going on with my with my interpretation. Of this monster. Oh no! How's the That's concerning. I mean, mine's all right so far. Got a lot of room to go. I'm hoping I have like a good three minutes left on the two minute timer. Oh, you got about fifty five seconds. About forty one seconds. Fifty five minutes. Got it. Got it. Cool. <laughs> this is the worst. I'm so sorry, Akanto. I've really let him down. Sure, you've done fine. Like, I've really, really let him down, and we've got three seconds left. What do you mean we have three seconds left? Two, one. I have not applied a single bit of color. I might be in with a chance. Uh, I hate timers. I have no concept of time. <laughs> Why does it look like a rug that's been made from a dedicantor, but also one that's apparently part part dog, but the specific dog breed that is Clifford the Big Red Dog? It's a cantor. Head on. It's got his tusks, all four legs, his tail swishing out to the left side. Is his nose normally that nose like? I don't no. Does he normally have ears that look like wings? I don't know, man. I don't Are those know his le looks. Is his leg on top of his tail? Is his I'm sorry, <laughs> is his tail coming from underneath his body? I don't know. Is that actually a tail? Which one? Uh, the big one in the back? Top left is a tail, yeah. Okay, because it being under the leg and the butt makes it look like it could be something else. <laughs>
Well, at least mine has colour in his finish, though I will admit your sassy upset shower is quite good. He does have at least a little bit of colour. I just I wish I'd had the time to colour the rest. He looks very disappointed. He is. He's actually making very obscene gestures in his language. Yeah, it does seem like that'd be incredibly rude if you understood Shara's Valdez. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, there's only one way to settle this. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. I'm shooting air at you like a gun made of uh, cock, but like the construction kind. And I'm going to hit you right in your... Uh, 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 clock, clock, clock. I'm going to clock you in the head with a beam made of air, and it's going to really make you feel scared. Oh, no. You got him. Ooh. I never said I was good at this, even remotely. You are very musically inclined. You should dominate this round. That doesn't mean I'm good at coming up with rhymes off of the top of my head. That's not what music is. See, I find it very ironic That's that... poetry, if anything. That I obviously, you know, meme it up for, for, the, for the content. But I, I, I do think I am actually quite good at coming up with lyrics on the spot. Like, it, all the monster raps and stuff, uh, the actual lyrics come out quite quickly. The performance part is a big struggle. And I find it really ironic that, essentially, apparently, that's the inverse of you. Yeah, that is that. Yeah, that is pretty normal, though. It's a very, it's a very different skill, honestly. <laughs> Maybe by our powers combined. But that's too much. We, we don't work together. We need to fight each other about weird aliens and stuff. That is true. That is the most important thing. All right, count me. Three, five, six, eight. Who do we appreciate a canto? Yeah! <coughs> All right, he's got he's got throat problems. That is, uh, <laughs> I've never been well since the accident that made me look like this. But uh, I'll give you the gist. I'll hit you with my little clawed fist, and then everyone will be like, "Oh, we miss Charis Falder, who's now." Father. Yeah, I think what that's made me realize is like I could do better at those if the goal is just to come up with words that rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the shower has become a, a father and an orphan in the same sense. It's a very, it's a very interesting like familial d dynamic. Isn't it is it? quite the development all of a sudden, isn't it? So. I, it does concern me that you seem to be like rapping from the position of that specific cantor. Like, am I fighting that one? Because in that case, I think it's a lot easier. <sighs> All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, two eclectic battles worthy of consideration of going down in history. Let us know Feel your thoughts, but for now, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good Bye. Goodbye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.